so I'm the admissions tutor for podiatry. Um, I'm a senior lecturer. I take the students to do the dissection at the uh, uh, at the medical school, uh, and I teach them the medicine and um, some of the clinical skills uh, practically. Um, before I was a lecturer, uh, I'm a full-time lecturer now, I used to be working at Limb Salvage, working with people who had really serious medical problems, uh, working with uh, teams who, um, with specialists and surgeons who were going to try and save people's legs, um, and, and I was the podiatrist in the team. Um, I got into it because I was interested in general medicine and a careers advisor uh, was good enough to just uh, point me in the right direction and suggest podiatry. Um, and the thing I like about podiatry is it's really um, practical, you get to do lots of hands-on things, uh, you get to spend a lot of time with the patients, um, you don't need to be doing um, a lot of shift patterns. Um, you, you're working in normal time because you're a specialist um, and it's, it's really quite enjoyable. So in order to be a podiatrist, uh, you need to get a BSc Honours in, in podiatry and it's the only way that you can actually call yourself a podiatrist. Um, and um, uh, once you're qualified, you do need to do continual professional development. So um, you constantly have to be studying and this is monitored by the Health Professions Council um, to make sure that you're keeping up to date with practice and current clinical changes. Um, so whilst you don't have to sit the exam again, you do have to make sure you, you, your knowledge is, keep, is, is maintaining to be current really. Um, um, and it's a tough qualification. I think it's quite difficult to uh, have to do um, um, to get through. Uh, it's a, probably a lot more difficult than um, uh, some non-clinical uh, uh, courses that are available. I really decided on podiatry because there was a shortage of podiatrists. I qualified in the mid '80s um, when there was they were desperate for podiatrists, and uh, there were lots of opportunities for jobs. And this is exactly the same as it is now. There's a real shortage of podiatrists in the UK. I think it's one of those things that maybe people don't think of when they're considering medical careers. They just think maybe about just doctors and nurses and midwives. Um, and it, it is one of those areas that is a little bit off the radar. Um, the beauty of, uh, of, of treating the lower limb as well is that you don't have to do some of those horrible uh, investigations that maybe other uh, medical people have to do, which I'm quite glad about. I'm not going into detail, but maybe you can suggest some of those um, to your teacher. I think I'm talking really with my podiatry head on, so I've actually been a clinician for a long time, um, actually working with patients, uh, and the best bit about that job is actually fixing somebody, seeing somebody come in and not being able to walk, and then being able to uh, uh, feel much more comfortable and being able to get back to the normal sports and routines. It's really rewarding. It's one of the few medical careers where you can actually fix something and the patient feels better straight away. Uh, most things in medicine, you've got to wait several months until the, med, uh, the tablets work and uh, even then you might not be around when that happens. So it's kind of nice that you can do something and the patient feels better straight away so I, I, I really like that. Um, slightly different now being a lecturer it's really rewarding to teach students how to do things and go out into the world and then I get lots of messages from students who've seen things that I've taught them and they've made them better and uh, it's, it's really rewarding to um, find that maybe students have actually saved somebody's life because of the knowledge that, that, that they've been given. I think the most challenging aspects of, of the job are the fact that people don't always know what podiatrists do. There's, uh, I think it's uh, one of those professions that is a little bit under the radar. Um, people maybe are under the misconception uh, that you just cut toenails or um, people think that 
uh, it's sort of horrible dealing with feet when, when in actual fact there are a lot of worse parts of the body that you could be dealing with. Um, I, I think often we do, we do just have to educate people exactly what the scope of practice is and, and, and what we're doing. So that can be a challenge at times. Um, the other things are not everything gets better. I mean, one of the... Uh, to go back to the good things, you're not dealing with death on a daily basis, so we very rarely have to um, be informing people that people have died, um, and uh, very rarely um, things end in um, fa fatality. Um, but occasionally things don't always go to plan, uh, and uh, you can have things that don't get better, um, uh, and, uh, and that can be a bit challenging at times. One of the great things about being a podiatrist is you do work sort of nine to five. Um, you work sociable hours. You don't have to do late night on-call shifts. We don't really do emergency work. Um, we are specialists in the area of the lower limb, so people will send patients to us to be assessed and treated within normal hours. Um, and if you've got an NHS post, it really is nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, so if you do want to do private work you can do that outside the hours of normal uh, practice um, a lot of people have saturday morning clinics uh, if they work in the nhs and maybe an evening clinic where you see your private patients um, and you can mix nhs work with private work so you could have your own business and do locum work um, within the nhs um, or you could work for a sports club um, treating sports injuries as on the side of actually um, working full time in the NHS. So it's really quite adaptable in terms of a career um, path. So a normal shift pattern for a podiatrist varies greatly and it depends on your job role. From my point of view, when I started in the NHS, I'd be doing something quite different each day of the week. So I'd probably have a day where I was actually doing um, I used to have a day where I just did the surgical blocks, the, the nerve blocks, uh, prior to surgery for, for the surgeons. Um, I'd have a day where I'd be in hospital uh, treating the uh, complex cases with the multidisciplinary team. Um, uh, sometimes you have to visit patients at home that aren't mobile, so I'd have a day where I'd go out and actually visit people in their own home, homes and uh, uh, organise the treatment plans. Um, I'd have a day where I might be working in the lab making orthotics um, and um, doing um, uh, musculoskeletal injuries. Um, so it, it does vary from uh, day to day what you're going to be doing. You're very rarely just doing the same thing every day. Um, now as a, as a tutor, um, some days I'll be doing marking. At the moment I've got a big marking schedule, so I'm doing lots and lots of uh, uh, medicine papers which I'm marking at the moment. Um, um, I'll have lectures some days uh, and I'm lucky that I get to come in here in the clinical unit and actually treat some of the physical problems that people have. So I'm not just a lecturer, I do still have some hands-on and practical experience and I think, you know, if I was just a pure lecturer I probably wouldn't want to do it. It's the practical stuff that's important to me. Um, the progression routes for podiatry, uh, there's lots of different specialisms that you can go into uh, when you're a podiatrist. Uh, uh, one thing that you could do is go on and become a podiatric surger surgeon um, where you're an AHP um, specialist um, and obviously you get uh, a lot more uh, uh, money for doing that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you look up how much your, uh, a podiatric surgeon earns online, um, I think. Um, um, but that's where you actually go on and do bone surgery and pinning toes and some of the more complicated things. As an undergraduate uh, podiatrist, you'll be actually doing minor surgeries, nail surgeries, um, minor skin surgeries and some injections and things, but you can go on and do the more complicated stuff. You can also progress into musculoskeletal sports injuries uh, and maybe become a, a specialist in sports injuries. 
or you can go on and do the kind of work that I did with maybe limb salvage where you're working with a lot of diabetic complications um, and maybe general health complications within um, a, a large hospital team as well. So there's quite a lot of progression uh, for podiatrists and, and some people uh, do go on to become hospital man part of the management team um, as well. I think the advice I'd give to somebody who's thinking of coming into podiatry will be to actually do a bit of research and actually find out a bit about the job. I know I've talked a little bit about it today. Um, uh, we also want people to get some work experience and actually spend some time with a podiatrist and make sure it, it, that it's the right career for them because it, it isn't for everybody. Um, you need to be quite a special person to be able to uh, do some of these things. Um, so I'd recommend that you um, go out, get some experience, find out, do a bit of research. Um, the other thing as well is uh, you know, I think empathy is quite a, quite a good skill. Uh, imagining what it's like to be quite frightened. Patients do get upset because they're in a lot of pain and maybe just um, taking the time to think what would it be like if I was in a lot of pain and couldn't get my, my foot fixed, uh, how would I feel? Um, and obviously when people are in pain they can be uh, difficult to manage. Um, and I think as well, um, just keep things fun. Um, it is an awful lot of fun. Um, and if you can make people feel comfortable and, uh, and, and settled, it, it's a really good quality that you can have. Um, maybe even, uh, you know, like a swan, your feet are paddling underneath the surface, but you need to be able to keep uh, sort of lighthearted and, uh, and make everybody feel relaxed around you. That's, uh, that's, that's the kind of quality that I'd expect in a podiatrist.